Okay, we're continuing our journey through uh, this open-ended task. We're going a bit slowly through it just so you can get a really good sense of what's going on. Let's just, again, refer back to these guiding questions that are gonna help us create our report here. Remembering that these questions will not be provided to you in the actual SAC, so it's a good idea to have them in your bound reference. So it says, look at the scatter plot of the original data, describe it, describe any implications, done. We did the residual plot, we performed our transformations, and now we need to complete this transformation and give the least square regression line in terms of the correct uh, variables. So to do that, what we're going to do is jump over here. Uh, now, I can just come over here. I don't need to look at my residual plot here. So let's just hide the residual plot, but I need to figure out what my least square regression line is going to be. A couple of different ways of doing this. We could just go regression and then go, now let's just go hide it for a second and then show it again. Because now if I go show linear A plus BX, there it is. You might be asking yourself, how is it that I've got this R square valued also appearing with it? All that I've done is I've gone menu settings and then I've gone diagnostic. If you click diagnostic, it just includes it with it. And I find it very useful to have it here there with me. So there it is. The other way you could find your least square regression line is to come back over here and look at your data for the log GDP. Uh, so that's the correct transformation. Now you've got to remember which one you did it for. So it looks like it was our second transformation here. Uh, so if I come, that was the first one. It should be this one. And you can double check it just by coming here and double checking here. It's the log of the GDP and the LE. So that's giving you the A value and the B value. Or as I said, just make sure that you've got the correct scatter plot here by checking your X and Y variables. And there it is. All right, so we're now just going to write that in here. There it is. So you have to make sure that you're writing it in terms of the variables. That means you're not writing y and x, but you're writing uh, log life expectancy and log of GDP. The other thing that people mess up is they forget to write in the transformation here, but you have to remember to write in the transformation there. So there it is, we've done it correct to two decimal places as specified. The next thing we would do is the R value and the interpretation. Now we've already done that. We've already figured out that the R value is 0 0.9526 and we can comment on that as well. Uh, it's strong and a positive relationship. It then wants us to comment on the R squared value. Again, whoops, I did it. Wait, let's go control undo, control Z. Whoops, whoopsie daisy, my bad. Let's just, let's just go menu, analyze, regression, hide, uh, analyze, regression, show linear A plus BX, there it is. Uh, it is right there, 90.486, or you could come over here and you could read it off there. Or if you wanted to, you could just square that value. A couple of different options there. Uh, it's always safe, it's just to read it off your calculator. So you know, you're getting that correct decimal places. So I would recommend just reading it off your CAS, uh, because if you square it, you gotta make sure that you put in enough decimal places uh, that you round it off correctly. So just look at your CAS, uh, that's the best way to do it. Okay, the coefficient of determination tells us that 9.74% of the variation in the life expectancy is explained by the variation in the log of the gross domestic products. So just making sure that we remember um, the transformation that has occurred that is giving us this uh, percentage here. Okay, perfect. Now, prediction. This is where we're going to look back at our little thing here because the prediction was specified here. So if we just read this through again, complete the transformation and give the least square regression line in correct variables, we did that. Give all the important information pertaining to the relationship between the two variables. That's when we talked about the R and the R squared value uh, and we commented on them. Then it says, uh, predict the life expectancy of a country with a GDP of this and comment on the validity of this prediction showing working. Okay, so we come over here. This is the prediction now. We're showing the working that we've done. We're subbing in that value into our least square regression line. That is the working. We then write that down. We then say when the GDP is this, it is predicted that the life expectancy will be that correct amount of units, people. So uh, 79.05 years. Then we say the prediction was interpolated, therefore it is reliable. So before it said talk about the reliability of it, we know that this is an interpolation. How do we know that this was an interpolation? Well, it's because this value right here is uh, within the data range. Now, let's talk about that for a bit, because if we come over here, as you can see, we've got the log GDP at the moment, which kind of makes it hard to figure out whether or not uh, this is interpolation or extrapolation. But if we just for a moment here, go back to our original GDP data, you can see that if we're dealing with 28,000, 
that is clearly going to be about here, and that is within our data set. So it's clearly interpolation. But just make sure that you go back to the other one for the other one the right there. All right, <clears throat> so that's what you do there. So we have, if we go back to our questions here, predict the LE of the GDP and comment on the validity of the prediction showing working. Then we continue on, conclusion now. Now, quite a bit here to include in the conclusion. It says that we need to do the following. Discuss the results of your investigation, distinguishing between correlation and causation and suggest a possible conflating factor between the two variables. So here it is. This is what we're going to write. We're going to write. From this investigation, we can see that there is a correlation between GDP and life expectancy of a country. One is a good indicator of the other, as they have a strong relationship. However, we cannot say that one causes the other. Changing one of these variables will not guarantee a change in the other. So here, we're bringing into the discussion that correlation does not equal causation. And now we're going to talk about a conflating factor here. So other hidden factors could also be influencing this data, such as the healthcare system of a country and access to education. So just because you've got a high GDP doesn't necessarily mean or to put it another way, having a high GDP does not cause a high life expectancy. There are other hidden factors here. And that is countries with a high GDP tend to have better healthcare systems and better access to education. So that is causing a high life expectancy. It's not purely the GDP. You could find, I'm sure, an example of a country with an extremely high GDP with a low life expectancy. And that's because maybe they don't have the healthcare system and access to education. But for the most part, if you do have a high GDP, you're more likely to have these other factors, which then causes you to have a high life expectancy. So it's just talking about that correlation does not equal causation. Give me some factors that might explain what's going on here. And then we're all done. So if we go back here and read this, we have discussed the results of our investigation, uh, distinguishing between correlation and causation and suggesting some possible conflating factors between the two variables. Okay, everyone, that is it. We have done it. Make sure, of course, at the very end, you go back and you read through your rubric, making sure that you've touched upon everything. Make sure you also realize that in your actual SAC, we're going to be judging you based on the quality of your writing, meaning are you writing in coherent sentences? Okay, everyone, hopefully this has made sense to you. Make sure that you're reaching out if you're at all confused about anything I have said or want some further clarification as to what your actual open-ended SAC will look like. Thank you very much. I'll see you later.